Hi everyone, I'm Joel and I'm a co-founder of uh, 3 Books Labs. Today I'm going to be talking about ceramic and how we uh, see it open sourcing the world's information um, and kind of diving into what we mean by programmable streams and how it all relates to identity. Cool. So what is a world of open source information? Like what would that look like? Um, so we think that like um, we really need to de-silo all, all information in the world or like <laughs> a lot of information needs to be de-siloed. So how can we share information like across or organizational or application boundaries? Um, and it seems like this kind of system needs to really be based on public key uh, cryptography, um, like Daniel kind of mentioned a bunch already. Um, we, we see this that this can be achieved with um, stateful streams. And what this really means is streams of events uh, and then processing on top of that. So we get a state. Um, and, and in ceramic, what this looks like is that we have individual streams that are separate from each other. Um, uh, so you don't have to like compute like a global state of the entire network. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of a minimal building, building block for interoperable information. Uh, and if we have this, we can kind of create a global data environment uh, where we can share these streams uh, globally, uh, the commits or the events of the, the logs of the streams can though originate locally. So I create it on my, on my machine and it's like propagated throughout the network. Uh, and ideally we'd also have like uh, multiple different data structures uh, that are supported. And I'll kind of go, get into that a little bit more soon. Um, so the goals of ceramic is really to facilitate this in, in a scalable way. So uh, basically we want to be able to handle the world's mutable information. Um, and obviously it would be preferable if this is quite low latency. Um, we want, we want it to be flexible. So um, if we want to be able to su support like a bunch of different types of information, we can't really just like have one data structure and like one state representation. It needs to be like support for various different formats and types of data and streams. Uh, and yeah, different ways to represent the state as well. Um, and if you compare, if you look at a blockchain right now, like uh, they have, um, global state, which means that you kind of have one big state machine and everything needs to happen within that state. And that's kind of cool in, in kind of the, the world of um, financial stuff. You can do flash loans and things like that, which is kind of, kind of totally mind blowing. Um, but, but if we're working with like information, we don't really need that kind of uh, composability of uh, messaging uh, in, in the same way all the time. Uh, so we want to be able to have like local consensus of this, these different streams uh, independently of each other. Uh, so we, we don't need to like coordinate everything together at once. Uh, so yeah, so we would use uh, consensus by stream and, and potentially they can also make, make this work offline. Uh, yeah, so, we're, so this is kind of the goals of ceramics so where we are right now. So we have a, a you know, public network that uh, is kind of global. Uh, has these local uh, per stream consensus. Um, and um, we're really working on right now is like making uh, the, the mainnet, uh, making that go live and, and kind of then focusing on like scaling out this and like allowing more different types of, of stream uh, processing stuff. Um, all right, so let's dive into like, what is a stream? and and what, why is that, what, what do we want to do with it? Um, so we, we call them, we like to refer to them as like a stream of commits. And um, essentially this, you can think of the, each commit as a, an event uh, which is signed. And, or it can also be like verifiable in some other way, like a blockchain anchor. Uh, but essentially, it's it's, unit, it's it's a commit that contains some kind of data that allows you to update the state of um, uh, the state that the stream represents. Uh, we give each each of these streams like a unique identifier, um, um, 
Uh, I'm going to refer to them as stream IDs. Currently in the ceramic implementation, they're called document IDs. Um, but streams, uh, since we're using the streams language, it's more appropriate. Um, and in theory, these commits, commit streams can be like any type of IPLD data structure. Uh, so like any type of IPLD DAG. Uh, so it could be used to represent like DAGs um, or just like straight, you know, append only logs. Currently in the ceramic implementation, uh, we have like one, uh, one log. So there's no like branching uh, supported yet. So that's something that I want to add in the future. Um, and yeah, each stream is processed independently. So you can kind of parallelize this uh, quite well. Uh, yeah, and here in, to, to the right, we have an example of like a Genesis commit, which is like the first creation of the stream. Uh, and then like an anchor commit anchors it into like a blockchain. And then signature commits contains like patches um, uh, or other types of modifications or like other types of like data events. Um, and then there's stream processors. Um, and this really governs how uh, the state uh, progresses as their new commits or events that come in. And they define what is a valid commit. And they also define like consensus rules if there is like divergence or um, yeah, different opposing views. Like what, what's, what's valid? Like is the signature from a, a, a DAD that's like allowed to make the update or not? Um, and finally, to like make this really work well, especially in, in an environment where we have DIDs and we need to have this kind of secure uh, key rotation that Daniel talked about, uh, we use checkpointing. Uh, and really, this could be done in uh, various different ways. Right now, we anchor periodically into Ethereum. And uh, these anchors can be batched. We can like take uh, updates from a bunch of different streams and anchor them into uh, Ethereum with like one transaction. But in theory, you can do it in other blockchains or uh, potentially using some kind of committee. Um, so Ceramic is a completely decentralized network where a Ceramic node is based on IPFS and Ethereum. So IPFS and IP Elite store kind of the, the commits in the stream and Ethereum to do the anchoring. Uh, then we use libp2p to um, gossip the tips of the stream. So the tips basically mean what's the latest update. And I can also make queries for like, hey, I have this stream ID. Like, how can I, can you give me the latest update? And I can verify just an individual stream locally. I don't need to care about the whole state of the entire network. So we can make extremely light clients. Um, but we have a global namesake space and each stream ID is, is global. So I can look that up uh, from anywhere. Um, Streams can depend on other streams. Um, so I'm gonna, in an example later, uh, talk about, uh, we can have schemas that are enforced on some streams as they uh, like uh, apply updates. We can also have links to, between streams. So they can link each, uh, each other in the, in the state. So we can like kind of start creating a graph of information uh, once these streams are being processed. Um, and finally, like how do we persist the, the state of, of or sorry, the, the, the logs, like these logs that keep growing, like um, uh, how, how are they backed up? So you have like a bunch of different op options, like you can store this log in S3, uh, so, or you can store it on a remote IPFS node. Obviously it's stored on the local ceramic IPFS node, or you can back it up to Filecoin or some other kind of uh, data persistence network. Um, so, in Ceramic, we have this concept of stream processors um, or doc types as they're currently called in the implementation. Uh, there's two doc types that are supported right now, um, but you can kind of implement your own custom. So tiles is just the JSON document uh, that optionally has this JSON schema enforcement that I talked about before. So the JSON schema can live in another, another tile and then um, be enforced once you update the tile. And the conflict resolution we use here um, for tiles is if there are two separate branches um, of, uh, of the tile uh, commit log, which we saw up here, so the two branches uh, of, of this log, what essentially happens is the, the one branch that was like anchored earliest is the branch that will be the canonical branch. And this also makes it possible to do security revocation. Uh, the type 10 link is interesting because 
and in different blockchain systems. So like Ethereum, Filecoin, and Polkadot, and like Cosmos, you have um, blockchain accounts, but they're not really the IDs. Uh, but with a Cap10 link, uh, we allow you to like link a blockchain account to a um, DID, and this can be like cryptographically proven, uh, uh, and it's pretty cool. It works quite nicely to just tie together uh, the the whole blockchain ecosystem into like this DID ecosystem. And yeah, you can create any type of custom duck type. Right now, you're limited to this earliest anchor wins. Um, conflict resolution. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the, in the future, we hope to like make that into a more, like a more broad um, conflict resolution strategy where you can use things like CRTTs and stuff like that to mm -hmm. enable this to be used in a more kind of uh, better, basically better, get a better user experience out of, of, out of the system. All right, so uh, let's dive into identity on ceramic. So, uh, the IDs is the account model of Ceramic. So um, in tiles uh, and like the, the main way you can access like the, the public and like request signatures from a user in, in the Ceramic when you're creating doc types or when you're using tiles is the IDs. And to facilitate this, uh, to request signatures and decryption and stuff from the wallet, we have defined uh, EIP 2844, which is a way to like interact with the wallet, request signatures, request this decryption. And ceramic is really DAD agnostic. So like any uh, DAD method that conforms to the standard uh, plus minus like some, some specifics of, so you can use DADs in a trustless manner. Um, uh, and we have some DAD methods that are right now natively supported. Keyed is one of them. It's like the most simple DAD that's just like a public key pair. Um, 380 is a DAD method that's built on ceramic uh, using uh, ceramic tiles. So it's just like basically putting a the document into a ceramic tile. Uh, recently, we started working on something called NFT did, and that's kind of cool. You can build uh, basically an identity that um, where the owner of the NFT is the one who has access to write and read stuff. So. Um, you can basically have this transferable or tradable identity, um, which is quite neat. And we're also working with some some uh, some teams uh, to add support for org identities. So like that's on-chain uh, DAOs or organizations. So like uh, Gnosis Safe and Moloch DAO to give that, those types of organizations DADs. Um, and yeah, it's quickly, we, the way we represent signatures in commits uh, is using a standard called Dag Jose, uh, which is like um, a standard for signing encrypted JSON objects, works quite nicely with um, DADs. Um, and in the future, there could be potentially other uh, signed data formats that work nicely with DADs as well. But Dag Jose works pretty well for now. and is standardized within IPFS and Jose is standardized within IETF. All right, so what are some use cases, especially like as they relate to identity? So publishing, you can publish stuff and they will get, you know, you, you get that persistence of like things being anchored on chains. You get this proof of publication, which is useful for your like scientific publishing, journalism, uh, commenting is interesting because like a lot of uh, DAOs, especially in, in the blockchain ecosystem, um, really want to be able to make comments and know that they were made by the right person at the, at the specific time so you, they can reason about the governance process. Uh, and, and related to that, off-chain voting is also like an application that we have been exploring a bunch. So do, doing stuff like conviction voting and quadratic voting. Quadratic voting, it's really important to have like some kind of sense of strong identity or like identity reputation, um, which kind of ties neatly into the next thing, which is identity index. And I won't really, I don't think I really have time to go into that, but uh, Michael is talking about that in his talk right after this. Um, and just because like ceramics is based on, on, on these streams that you have some processing on, uh, you can imagine like a bunch of different applications based on this, like potentially like service orchestrations have some kind of global event logs for um, things that are going on in, in different areas of the world potentially um, or yeah analytics like it's really kind of a lot of stuff that you could potentially build on it all right so 
Uh, Ceramic is currently in, in the testnet phase, um, but we have an early launch program. So if you want to check it out and uh, you know try to build on it and be one of the first people to be on the mainnet, uh, you should check out the early launch program. And yeah, check out our documentation for like diving in and, and trying to build cool stuff on Ceramic. Uh, 